On screen now is a list of the best enlisted soldier perks in order of highest effectiveness by tier list and categorized under mobility perk points, vitality perk points, and weapon handling perk points. You can pause the video, take a screenshot, print it out, fax it to your brother's dog. Uh, I don't know what you do in your free time. The point is you can leave this video now if this is all you need. The rest of this video will dive into why these are the best perks for your soldiers and why often you should ignore the recommended perks that it suggests for you, as well as providing some crucial but hidden enlisted information for new players and pros alike. And yes, you will likely at least partly disagree with my rankings on at least some of these perks, but that is all part of the fun of it. Let's start with the green tree, or the mobility perk point category. Remember, each category is completely split from each other, as in you need green perk points, this walking boot icon, to unlock any of the following soldier perks. I should also say that this perk category is the best out of all three categories meaning this tree has the most overall effective and viable perks, so many here are high tier perks. That being said, the best perk here, almost without question, is plus 15% sprint speed. Enlisted is a game about movement, about attacking the objective point, about defending it, about flanking quickly around the side of the enemy without them noticing, about building a cheeky rally point rapidly in a gap between enemy waves, about rotating between points on a conquest map, about pushing forth with your team, or creating an organized retreat to delay the oncoming attackers. You name it, you're moving somewhere. The quickest way to move is by sprinting, so you're just increasing your ability to do literally everything quicker. And if that's not enough to convince you, then I must explain to you the term of opportunity cost. Yes, I did an economics degree, as I'm sure you can tell. It's defined as the potential benefits that an individual misses out on when choosing one alternative over another. The size of the benefit you miss out on if you don't pick this perk is gigantic, and you will miss out on it if you pick almost any other admittedly decent perks here because this perk costs the grand spanking 16 mobility perk points. Note that this perk is compounded with your charging too, i.e. with a bayonet, axe and sword, so you really zoom around the map when combined with this, making it especially worth it on your first soldier you spawn any squad with, which normally should be an engineer to build a rally point the first time you spawn. Plus 20% weapon aim speed can be very useful in PvP situations, and if you aren't aware, you need to be. Each weapon has its own hidden aim down sight speed stat in the game, which you can find on Euthemia's public and listed resource, link in the description. Therefore, in absolute terms, you get more value out of this perk by putting it on a soldier already with a high ADS stat weapon, like SMGs or rifles, which arguably don't even need the perk, and much less value from this perk on weapons that, to be honest, need quicker ADS speed, like machine guns, making it not really valuable on the weapons that it should be valuable for, in once again opportunity cost terms. And to rub salt in the wounds, Machine Gunner 2 troop classes already have a default perk of plus 7% weapon aim speed, and to my knowledge they don't compound each other, so B tier it is. Plus 75% med pack usage speed reduces the length of time to use a med pack on a soldier when you are down from 8 seconds to just 2 seconds, which is a really big difference. It means, should you get knocked on all fours, you can get back up and into the fight super quickly again. It's a very popular perk amongst the player base, though it does have its caveats, and it's a big one, you only have a small percent percentage chance to be downed and not outright killed in the first place when you receive damage. It sits in some complicated zone of weapon damage explanations, which are probably out of the scope for this video, but I've made a few videos on it in the past in recent memory if you're interested. But in general, what you need to know is that more often than not, you will be one hit killed to prevent you even being able to make use of it in the first place. Or alternatively, any good player is just going to continue holding left click on his fully automatic weapon and finish the down soldiers off. Even if you have a ton of bots following you to cause a distraction, he's still going to clean everyone up. Therefore, B tier. It's good, so it's highest on B tier, but not great. And once again, you're missing out on sprint speed when doing this, so the opportunity cost of this perk is really big. We'll do plus 100% climbing speed next, for an incredibly high 7 mobility perk points. We can answer this one quickly. D tier. You are almost never actually climbing in this game, but occasionally a ladder, which is the only thing it affects. And if you're actually climbing some super high tower to snipe a hundred miles away from your own team, then you're likely not helping your team much at all and costing your team the game. And watch this video to see why and what you should be doing instead. Next up in terms of perk point cost is plus 10% run speed. Now, this isn't a bad perk, and is actually something I get on Radium N2 troop classes, as they have 22 perk points, enough for both plus 15 
15% sprint speed and plus 10% run speed. But what's the difference between the two? Run speed is actually what you probably think of as walking in game, as in not pressing the shift key or analog stick on console as you move, and sprint speed is the faster version. Higher run speed also compounds onto sprint speed, but in a smaller proportion. It adds something like 2-3% sprint speed on as well, and a tiny bit extra onto your charging speed. So it does actually help more than you think. Though the extra run speed really doesn't matter because you rather sprint anywhere anyway. And it's only a small increase, so realistically it's just hardly noticeable. C tier. Plus 40% maximum jump height reigns supreme as a perk when bunny hopping used to be a thing in this game. So it used to be overpowered. But that was changed more than two years ago now. And since then it's only become less useful. It helps you get into the attics of some buildings in Normandy or maybe to reach certain ledges you couldn't before. But not much else at all. D tier. Plus 60% movement speed while crawling or crouching for 3 perk points is something that has gone very under the radar, and is quite undervalued. It's probably surprising to many of you going in B tier, as a lot of high level players utilise different poses and moving in them to get an advantage in close quarters PvP. So realistically, it's justified. It's pretty good. Plus 100% speed of extinguishing fire on a soldier is a perk I very commonly pick if I have at least one leftover green perk point after sprint speed, mostly because of how cheap it is. Fire, molotovs and flame throws in general are such a nuisance and prevent you and your entire squad from doing something valuable at any one time. The quicker you can get rid of it, the sooner you can do something actually useful or react to an enemy trying to shoot you. It's become a bit less valuable after the recent fire nerfs, but it's still great nonetheless. And because of this, it has to go an A tier. Plus 50% speed of changing pose is an absolutely essential perk for me on all of my soldiers. I get it on every one I can, especially because it's free. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to crouch or go prone much quicker than ever before. But what it really shines in is PvP, as I often crouch to get an advantage and throw off the opponent's aim. And all of the top players do it as well. A tier, without a doubt, and the highest one than A tier. And you're probably thinking, what about all the class specific perks that can appear in this tree? Well, engineers can get a plus 50% building speed perk for 14 perk points. It's a great perk, even despite its cost, and at least goes into A tier, maybe S tier if you're the one that spams engineer structures. But sprint speed is just better, even for engineers, because moving into position to build something and staying alive in the process due to the speed is more easily done with sprint speed. Building speed doesn't matter if you can't get into a good position. Therefore, I'd probably put it middle of A tier, but obviously there's a bit of leeway here. Plus 50% healing speed of allies for medics is only D tier. Would be F tier if there was one, because healing people is unfortunately absolutely useless in the current meta of the game, and if you're doing it, you're likely griefing my teammates. It wastes your time, and people die to anything in 0.001 seconds anyway, though it does give a bit of XP. It would be nice if medics were more valuable, but they are just worse versions of the assaulter class right now in the current state of the game, with no large ammo pack slots. And what about tanker perks or aircraft perks? Now, I hardly use these, so I'm really not the best person to ask, but for your sake, I have asked the literal best pilots and tankers in the game I've ever seen to rank these. So, we're in good hands, and here you are. Though I fully expect people to disagree with at least some of these choices. And now we move on to the red tree, or vitality perk point category, with the heart monitor icon. I would also say that this is the worst overall perk point tree, so it should be quite easy to get through. The best perk, with absolutely zero arguments otherwise, is plus 35% vitality, which literally means that every soldier with this perk gets plus 35% extra health. In what way could this not be the best perk? It allows you to survive things you couldn't survive before, and gives you irreplaceable time to shoot back and kill another player. Considering a soldier has a base health of 10, and you'll then get 13.5 with this perk, you can suddenly survive a close quarters hit from a Gewehr 43 Kurtz, the best weapon in the entire game as per this video on the top 30. And even the Feder of Automat, which came in second, and so much more. More. Though that being said, any absolute animal bot with a bolt action rifle will probably always embarrass you at any short range. There's no surviving that. Plus 80% aim stability with firearms after receiving damage for 11 perk points sounds pretty good, but in reality, it doesn't matter at all. If you're being shot, you're likely already dead, so you wouldn't even be able to use the effect of this. It might be good if you could stack it with the plus 35% vitality perk, but it's really expensive, so you actually can't ever use both at the same time, making this unfortunate 
unfortunately just D tier. If in the coming major updates where the whole process of selecting perk points is changing, stacking these two may be an option and all of a sudden very viable. So keep an eye out for that. Plus 200% health restored by med pack is the next most expensive option and almost equally as useless as the last one. Okay, maybe that's harsh. It sounds awesome. 200%, wow. And so you realize how using a med pack slows you down massively and something that I bet 90% of you never think to do anyway, unless you're downed. Also, the average medkit heals something between 20 to 15% of your max health, meaning this perk makes it between 60 and 45%. And if you think about those raw numbers, it becomes useless. Every weapon in this game does more than enough damage to do more than half of your health, and most of the weapons do enough damage to one hit kill you. Think about assault rifles, machine guns, semi-automatics, bolt action rifles, even grenades, bombs and rockets. So no matter how much health it restores for you, you are dead if you are hit. The only time it can be helpful is if you somehow heal yourself to full, not partial, because then that will allow you to survive the longest you can when being shot. And even then, with enough time, you can automatically heal yourself to full health anyway. It might sound harsh, but in my opinion, C tier. It might be higher once the perk system rework comes into the game soon though. And if you do choose this perk, if vitality is not an option for you, or if your soldier has less than 16 vitality perk points to begin with, then I can understand you picking this. Next up is the perk I personally always get if I can't get the vitality perk. My fallback option, if you want to call it that. Plus 100% stamina. Remember earlier in this video how I sung the praise of the extra sprint speed perk? Well, combining that one with this one means you can absolutely zoom around the map whilst charging for super long periods. And combined with a flask, you'll outpace every single person around you, allowing you to flank around the enemy with ease and they won't even notice you doing it because you're that quick. The longer I can sprint or charge, the better. In literally so many avenues of the game. And this perk does exactly that. It's going surprisingly highly for many of you, I imagine, in A tier because little else is good in this tree, as I said before. Now this one for five perk points is hard to comprehend sometimes, but you really don't need to. I shortened it for the tier list, but realistically, it doesn't matter. It's going in bottom of D tier regardless. The speed of health regeneration in this game is already so slow that an extra plus 150% is hardly noticeable. To make full use of this, you'd need to be out of combat for a long time to restore yourself to full, because if you restore only partially, you're dead anyway, as said for a similar perk earlier. And if you're out of combat, then you're not really helping your team in any meaningful manner, and kind of team griefing. Remember, this is the fast paced and exciting enlisted, not hell let loose. Bottom of D tier it goes. Head shaking is something all enlisted players dislike, so this perk is another that sounds great, but once again, not that useful. Most times when you're concussed, you're likely already dead because something hit you, and if the off chance you're not dead, someone's probably aiming at you to take a shot, and even if they aren't doing either of those things, then you're probably in cover far away from combat, but a bomb just hit near where you were. So the amount and duration of said head shaking doesn't matter at all, because it can't affect your gameplay if you're not even in the action. The actual size of these percentage changes anyway are also not not significant enough to be worth using. And the best players at this game actually learn to adapt to aim accurately over time despite being concussed. Not important enough. D tier. Plus 100% breath holding time while aiming for 3 perk points. Cheap and somewhat useful. So it's going in B tier, which is not really where I'd want to put it, considering what it's encouraging for you guys to use it properly. If you are a sniper, then this one is definitely for you, as holding your breath is something you can do on any weapon whilst aiming to be more accurate, as it reduces the sway and therefore can be useful in any troop class, not just snipers. I almost never utilize this feature, as I can already aim very well and it's just another button I'd need to consider pressing in high pressure situations, which is just not an ideal thing. Yet for many others, it can be very useful, and I can see it being for high level gameplay. Contrary to popular belief though, it does not reduce recoil or shot dispersion, just the sway of the weapon. And the last one, plus 100% stamina regeneration speed. Well, it's dang useful when combined with a flask and the plus 100% stamina perk we talked about earlier. And it's free, so bare minimum it has to kind of be beat it, but could be a tier. If you have spare space in your lineup, it never hurts. It just isn't the most powerful perk. As for class-specific perks, plus 100% uses of a medic's medical bag for his allies goes straight into dirt tier, as no one even uses your medical bags anyway. And if you are, you're probably griefing my games. All jokes aside, it's only really useful if the player picking up extra medkits from there already has the medkit usage speed and or health restored by medkit perks. Similarly, plus 200% health restored when healing allies is only useful when deciding to roll 
play as Desmond Doss and useless for everyone else. D tier once again, but a bit higher. Plus 40% resources available for buildings for engineers only however has to go in A tier as it never hurts to be able to build a lot more as an engineer, especially if you're an NG fanboy. But for most of us, picking this means missing out on vitality, so it still really just isn't worth it. Your tankers and aircraft perk point choices are also on screen now for this tree. The last tree, stick with us, we're nearly there. More useful than the red tree, the weapon handling yellow tree with the fist icon has a handful of situational perks, so this section is arguably the most important to listen to. In most situations, emphasis on the most here, as I did not say always, minus 40% firearm vertical recoil while standing perk is the best one here, and it's not even the most expensive, meaning you can always have it available to you on any troop class. You pick this one for a number of reasons. One is the fact that 99% of weapons in the entire game have more vertical than horizontal recoil, meaning by sheer numeric size, you are getting more value out of vertical recoil than horizontal recoil. And two is literally that the size of the effect is bigger, 40% over 30%, as I expect you all know how numbers work by now. The only weapons that may benefit from horizontal recoil over vertical recoil perks are machine guns such as the MG34, the Browning M1919A6 and the Madsen. There are a few SMGs and other weapons dotted around as well, though it should be said, horizontal recoil is infinitely harder to recoil control than vertical is, hence why it is sometimes of necessity to pick the horizontal perk anyway, if for some reason you just hate the horizontal on a certain weapon. Like in my opinion, the Karali. The Karali is a great weapon, but its horizontal recoil for me makes it almost unusable. As a result, vertical is going in S tier and horizontal in A tier, though often this is down to your personal preferences, and if you feel as though you benefit more from horizontal than vertical, go for it. Next up is plus 12% firing rate when using bolt action rifles. It's self-explanatory really. It just makes you fire quicker and hence have a higher chance at killing enemies, especially if both you and your enemy misses your first shot. If you are a bolt action rifle lover, this is an absolute must for you. S tier. I run it on all of my Arasaka Japanese babies, and let me tell you, it really makes a difference. You can turn the Arasaka rifles and carbines into machine guns basically. Not literally, but you know, it's the thought that counts. And if you plan on playing low battle rating matches after the merge happens, you need this perk and pick this instead of any recoil perk. Because remember, for bolt actions, recoil doesn't matter at all as you need to pull back the bolt anyway. It's an excellent perk for new players too, who by default are using bolt actions. But of course, if you're using anything that's not a bolt action at any point in time, get rid of this perk. It's deadwood if you don't change it. So for that reason, it could quite easily be bottom of D tier if you're using anything not a bolt action. And now is the 10 perk point greater chance to get downed and you can stay downed for a longer time without bleeding out. Yes, it's a long winded one and I struggled to fit it all on a single card, but just bear with me. Honestly, D tier basically useless. The second half of this perk doesn't matter at all, as it's only useful if you actually decide to get behind cover before healing yourself, as otherwise you're just healing yourself in the open and you'll just die anyway, no matter how long you've got left before you die by default. But often this is impossible if you're out in the open. The first part of this could be useful, and in fact statistically it actually means you get five more downed health points. But as I explained earlier in this video, your chance of getting downed in the first place is low, and five extra health doesn't prevent most weapons from instantly killing you at any distance anyway, and you're more than likely dead anyway to the next bullet from the guy shooting your squad regardless if you actually are down. It might be difficult to explain, but it is useless, trust me. For 8 perk points though is another great perk, plus 12% firearm reload speed. This is very useful on some weapons you think have just too long of a reload time. For a nasty little trick, I always run it on my machine gunner troop type 2s, which have, at max perk points, exactly 22 weapon handling perks, meaning I can run both reload speed and vertical recoil perks together, which is insane. And it gets 16 and 16 on the other two categories, allowing you to perfectly use all of your perk points on the perks we recommended earlier. It's really satisfying. I know. This perk goes in A tier, but could even be S tier if it was a little bit cheaper in terms of perk points. Plus 50% throwing range of grenades goes in C tier. It can be useful to blow up that pesky tank with an explosive pack that's a bit too far in the grey zone. Also, you can hit an impact grenade perfectly into a building full of AI. But the main problem with this perk is actually not to do with the perk itself. It's to do with the fact that you're likely already too used to the standard distance you throw grenades. Meaning, as soon as you pick this perk, you're going to miss the target a lot. If 
if you're not constantly aware of which soldiers have this perk. 80 gunner 2 class of troops already have plus 17 and a half percent of this as a default perk. Arguably the class that benefits the most from this perk to begin with, so it doesn't really make too much sense to add more on the end of it. It's also quite expensive still, so there are better options. Increases to melee damage and melee attack speed instantly goes into D tier, because all melee weapons that aren't knives or shovels, i.e. bayonets, axes and swords, all one hit kill enemies anyway because they do 25 damage or higher, more than enough for two and a half soldiers to instantly die to. Meaning, if you have a bayonet on any weapon, this perk becomes useless. Melee speed, however, is a bit more useful, but only in very rare situations when you really need to stab a bunch of people at the same time, so just an average day in London. But it's literally just a 20% boost, so you won't notice this at all. If it was plus 100% extra melee speed, this perk might have gone into C tier, but alas, it's relegated to D tier, and the bottom of it. Now is another very long-winded perk about shot spread that makes little sense when you first read it, in all honesty. Therefore, a bit of explanation here about enlisted mechanics is needed. Something you probably don't know is that, in short, when you quickly turn your soldier's direction, the hidden shot dispersion statistic increases significantly, as per this video on screen now, but only for a short time. This perk makes that dispersion increase smaller and last for a shorter period. In theory, this perk is very useful and is cheap as well, meaning you can almost always run it in addition to a recoil reduction perk. But whenever I tested it out and used it in game, you don't really notice any difference. It's going in B tier as it is cheap, but could quite easily be A tier if you used it for weapons with massive shot dispersions, that's. And last but not least, plus 50% weapon changing speed, which is completely free. This one is very situational. If you have any secondary weapon equipped of any type, for example, a flamethrower, anti-tank gunner, engineer, or any class where you have chosen the secondary weapon upgrade over the backpack slot, this perk then becomes quite useful, but not essential. I do often pick it on any of the classes I just mentioned, but as I don't choose to pick the secondary weapon slot, as backpack slots are just more useful and more versatile. Oh, and before you ask, no, it doesn't have any noticeable effect on switching to your sidearm or any other piece of equipment for that matter. As for the class specific perks, plus 25% flamethrower fuel, that's what this weirdly worded perk means, is a great perk for, you guessed it flamethrowers, as it literally just gives you more fire. What's not to like? Flamethrowers are already OP as it is. I put this in S tier. Simply because of how powerful flamethrowers are in the current meta of the game, this has to be in S tier, and the highest part of S tier. I'd recommend you pick this over any recoil perk, because you won't get to pick both flamethrower fuel and recoil perks. I feel like this perk is unbelievably overpowered, and probably one of the most underrated perks in the entire game. And it even pains me to have to put this at the top because of just how much I hate flamethrower spam. Plus 50% medkits available in medkit box is useless for all the same reasons mentioned earlier about how med boxes are never used anyway, so D tier. And plus 20% mortar ammunition. The first mortar and specific perk we've seen is actually great if you use mortars. It's the exact same concept as the flamethrower perk. The only detracting factor of this is plus 20% of not that much ammo to begin with really isn't very much. It's between one to three extra shots, which could be more. You are arguably better served just using ammunition boxes from your engineers in that squad just to restock your mortars rather than having to bother with this one, so could be S tier, but I'm going to go and put this in A tier. As always, the tanker and pilot's perk tiers are on screen now too, so pause the video if you need these. My most common loadouts for each soldier class are on screen now too, in case you want to directly copy them for whatever reason. My reasoning for these is just using all the concepts I've just taught you through this video. Just remember to ignore the order they're in. The order doesn't matter as it's literally dependent on how lucky I got with the three randomly offered perks when selecting them. One thing to also mention is to check your default perks on different classes. They can help you and affect your decision if you can't decide between one perk or another. The second important thing that I bet none of you knew about was the fact that each perk point a soldier has also adds an extra perk for that soldier. And you can see this on Euthemia's documents. I'll also leave a template of a full tier list for every soldier perk in the description of this video. Make sure you post your tier list on our Discord server for a good debate. But now that you know what perks to pick, if you're unaware how the leveling up of troops to begin with works, then watch this video. It's quite a complicated process to understand, so you probably should. At least until the campaign merge comes. Special thanks to all my YouTube channel members and patrons, including Vertix, Akolo QE, and others.